Good evening, y'all. Welcome back to the kitchen. And let me just tell you, I have got a pile of kitchen utensils. Some of my favorite gadgets on my booze block here. And I'm going to talk to you about, y'all have been asking me to do a gadget video, to do a small appliance video, to do a kitchen tour. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to kind of bring the camera down, and it's a big conglomerated bunch of stuff piled here, I promise. But I'm going to pick each one of them up and talk about it just a little bit and let you know if I can remember where I got them. Uh, now some, uh, listen, I've been collecting this stuff for 49 years, okay? So some of the places may not still have it, but you can find something similar. So let me bring the camera over here and um, a little closer, and I can show you um, the things that I use and let you know why I like Okay, y'all, here we go. I've already showed y'all my Swedish dough hook. Sir La Tab carries these. You can also get them at King Arthur Flower Company. And what the deal is, when you're stirring with it, the stuff moves through these holes instead of piling up like it does on a regular whisk. I love this for mixing batters, cornbread, uh, just a lot of different. If it's thicker especially, the Swedish dough hook is awesome. Now everybody needs a grater in their kitchen. I've got the box grater. I found this one at TJ Maxx. But the one that I absolutely use the most is this little one that I got years ago from Pampered Chef. I don't know if they still have it. See, you pop it out and uh, it'll stand up. And it just has, this is what I grate my cheese on if I'm not using my, my Tupperware grater. I also have one that attaches to my KitchenAid. That's a whole lot of trouble to attach all of that when I can just reach in the drawer, grab this, and grate what cheese I need. Now this comes in this size and then in one of the really fine shredded sizes. I seldom use this. I always use just regular grated size. I also have the zester or the microplane for nutmeg, for zesting your lemons and limes. I think this is a necessity. That's just me. And I'm just showing you what I use a lot. I really love this uh, scoop with the holes in it. You can a lot of times the kids will want beans, but they don't want um, a whole lot of juice in it. This is perfect, and I've also used this to scoop out spaghetti. Now another thing that you use instead of that, everybody needs a slotted spoon. That'll dip you. You know, use your scoops. I have. Uh, these measured cup and a half a cup scoops. You can use that and get a scoop of, say, beans and juice. But then when you want just some beans added to your bowl, use a slotted spoon and finish filling it up. These ladles or measured cups are very handy. They actually came from Weight Watchers year ago, years ago, and they may still have them. It's a cup, a half a cup, and I have a fourth of a cup one that I use a lot to measure. I have a, a regular ladle, then I have the one with the holes in it also, that it's very handy to be able to just get the uh, thick stuff that's in your soup or whatever instead of a bowl full of juice. Unless you want to put that juice on your cornbread and then you'll be mighty glad to have a ladle full of juice. I have several big serving spoons. This one is um, stainless steel. Now I have some blue it looks like granite ware, and I'm just going to tell you about them. They're stained with tea and everything else. But many years ago, my Aunt Helen, and I've cooked some of her recipes. I was named after her. Today is her birthday, but she's not with us anymore. But um, she brought me these back from a vacation they went on in Colorado. That was so many years ago, but I love my big serving spoons. And of course, I think of Aunt Helen every time I use them. Another thing I like, if I'm frying, I like to use this to dip, and I forgot what its name is. I get some timers, and its name ran right out of my head. But this is so nice for french fries, or fried okra, or fried squash, or something that you want to just reach down in the hot grease and let the grease get off of it. That thing is wonderful. Of course, the kitchen shears. Now, these happen to have come from Pampered Chef. 
I do everything with these from cutting my green onions up to uh, snipping my bacon into little bitty pieces when I want to just brown some pieces to put into a dish that I'm cooking. Um, I use these kitchen shears, of course they open plastic bags too, but I use them all the time, so not necessarily the Pampered Chef brand, but everybody needs a pair of kitchen shears designated for that. You need a bottle opener. You got to poke a little hole in that canned milk to pour it out. And you got to be able to open some things, so you just need an old-fashioned bottle opener. And speaking of canned milk, let me show you something I found and something that I use. This is a syrup dispenser, okay? I found it at Goodwill, and I thought, you know what? Every time I open a can of milk, I don't use it all. And I have to pour it over in a pint jar and put a lid on it. Well, you know what? Now I do. I put it in here. It seals with the lid. And then when I want some, I can just pour it out like a creamer. So watch for you one of these. I guess they still make them, but this is an old, old, old one that I got at a Goodwill when I was in Florida this summer on vacation. Now, this is another little gadget. And I don't know where you can get them. I know Zulily online has them. And it, see the holes in the bottom? This is perfect when you open your tuna fish. You sit that down in the can, hold the can, and, and it will uh, drain all the water out of it. You can do it with canned corn or any of your canned goods. This is awesome for straining those cans and you don't lose your goodie. All that comes out is the juice. You need one of those. One or two. A cake tester. I use this all the time to make sure my cornbread or my cake uh, dough is done. If you put it in there and it comes out with some dough on it, it is not done. If it comes out clean, it's ready to come out of the oven. These are not expensive, but they're handy. Who's going to come put all this stuff up when I get through? I have drug out a bunch of stuff. This is a, an egg separator. You rest this on the side of your cup. And uh, you have a cup under, uh, well, yeah, your cup's underneath here and it's resting on the edge of the cup. Let me get one and show you. You see, it just sits on the side of the cup or bowl. You break your egg in here, the yolk stays in the little basket, and the white goes down in there. Now, don't do another one before you put that white out, because what if you break the yolk in the next one and you don't ruin the white that's in there? Good tip. How do I know that? I did it. So an egg separator. You need an egg separator. And I'm sure that came from Pampered Chef. This is something that ever since I've had it, I love it. It's just an old fat. I've had electric can openers. I sure have. And I've had the kind you do like that. But look at this one. You put that on there and you turn the crank. And man, that is easy. This came from Thrive Life. Um, the freeze-dried food company. I love this. This is the one I use all the time. I don't use electric anymore. I just use that one. If you bake, you need cookie scoops. I have these in several sizes. I don't know if these came from Bed Bath & Beyond or if they came from Pampered Chef. I think probably some of each maybe, but I use them for different, different things. Besides just cookies. You need an offset knife for icing your cakes and spreading your icing. I have this, this size and I have the smaller size. This is spread the mayonnaise real good too, by the way. And then I have the wider spreader that's actually serrated on one little edge that I use a lot when I'm making sandwiches. Then I've showed you before my rata or rata, however you want to pronounce it, tomato knife. Let me tell you, you don't have any squashed tomato with seeds going everywhere. This just, you just hold that tomato and this just saws right through it. These things are one, they're only about eight bucks a piece. Wonderful. Okay, I don't remember the name of these and y'all have seen me use it. I use the black one a lot. I ordered these from Amazon because there was an infomercial on them. This is the best peeler I've ever had. It's so easy to hold easy to manage and it just peels like a razor blade so maybe look up vegetable peeler on Amazon and see it has a little thing here that you can dip the eye out of your potatoes with when you're peeling them these are awesome on the infomercial one of them they peel a um, and I haven't tried it but they actually peel a pineapple with it I mean they're absolutely fabulous those are I've got titanium ones I've got pampered chef ones I've got probably ten of these things these are the best I've ever had 
and I did order them from Amazon. You need a good flat, is this called a spatula or an egg flipper or whatever, but if you're going to put it under your fried eggs, it needs to be thin on the bottom. You don't want a big old thick one. You want something real thin that'll slip under that egg and flip it without breaking the yolk. That's a good thing. I've already showed y'all this, but this is from Wilton, and I actually got it with my coupon at Joanne Fabrics. This is a cookie scoop, and it's wonderful because you can just scoop a couple at a time up, and um, they don't stick off the side of your spatula and break when they're soft, and then just put them over on your rack to cool. A cookie scoop is handy, not necessary. I love my um, this scoop, and it's called a bench knife. How about that? I remembered the word. When I have diced a bunch of stuff up, I scoop it up with this. If I've got flour all over the top of my booze block from making dumplings, I rag it all together and get it up on this. This thing is very good for a lot of different applications, and they're not expensive. I do know that I saw these at Sir La Table. Um, I'm sure Bed Bath & Beyond would have them, and you can order online. Those are very handy to have. I love my garlic press. You put your garlic in, peeling and all, and press it and it comes out through the bottom. The peeling stays inside and you've got minced garlic. I use this on a daily basis. Okay, I've showed y'all before how I use this potato masher to do my boiled eggs. Not just for potatoes, but I'll mash boiled eggs with it when I put them in tuna fish, potato salad, whatever. When I want to mince, this is what I use. And this is another kind of potato masher. If you don't want your potatoes just squashed completely, this is just an old-fashioned potato masher. And Sir La Table has one in a little bitty size to get in little places for the small jobs. I love my little whisk. I have whisk in all sizes, but this one is so handy for mixing sauces and all. I use it a lot. And this is another little whisk that came from Pampered Chef, and it's handy for mixing hot chocolate or something like that. It don't slosh out and make a big mess like one of these bigger ones would. That's a very good thing to have. Okay, you need uh, silicone spatulas little ones to get down and to get the last of your mayonnaise and mustard out and then this is to use with your mixing bowl or whatever and the silicone is great because if you're making something on the burner you can use it to stir with and scrape that pan and it doesn't melt I love the silicone ones I use those a lot you need some silicone brushes to baste with and I have the small one and guess where it came from Sir La Top and I've got the larger one and I use both of them. They're very handy. This is something that I got at Pampered Chef, but since then I've seen it at a lot of places. When you've got a big old blob of raw ground beef or chicken or turkey, you can just put that in there and twist it and it just breaks it into little pieces where you can brown it real good. Or sometimes I just, you know, even after I've done that, I take it and jiggle it around in the skillet and get everything broke up real little. That's good. This is called, I think, a fish turner. But it's so cool for like lifting your crepes up because it's a little bit curved. It curves up a little bit. Pancakes or whatever, that'll get right up under the edge of them and then you can get it and flip it. So that's a real handy, real handy uh, thing to have. I use this a lot and this was Pampered Chef. It's like fine, fine uh, screen on there. And a lot of times if I if fried bacon, but I want all of the little pieces out, I'll dip them out with that and let them, because I save my bacon grease to season with. I just do that and then I have the little pieces to put in my beans or whatever I'm cooking and it keeps my grease clean. Um, this is another little pair of scissors that I got and the name of them is the best scissors in the world or the best little scissors and let me tell you they're wonderful. I use those a whole lot here in the kitchen. This you have to find on eBay but this is in I think they're antiques. It lifts the lid off of a, a jar that has been canned and it doesn't um, say you were opening a jar of your salsa and if you use one of these it bends the edge of the rim of the lid. If you use this it pops it up and you can put it back on there and use it. And they are called uh, Pry a Lid. P-R-Y dash A dash Lid. And if you'll Google that I got mine off eBay. 
Uh, so if you will Google that, you can find them. They're, they may be a little pricey. Sometimes you find somebody that don't know what they're worth and you get them for less. But it's worth it. They're awesome. And then if you have a jar like uh, a pickle jar that you're trying to open that has that one piece lid, you put that right under the edge and it doesn't ruin the lid, but it pops that seal loose and you can open it. And when you get older and your hands act like they're getting older, that's handy to have. I also love this little ringed vegetable scrubber. It's easier to hold. I got it the other day at Sir La Table. It's like four bucks. It's, it, man, I love it. That's new gadget for me. Now, I've showed y'all before my um, meat tenderizer. It has a smooth side, and you can unscrew it and flip it over, and it has the tenderizing side. I use the smooth side most of the time to pound chicken breast or meat thinner through a couple of layers of wax paper or saran wrap. But I love, I love my, the press in that. Everybody needs some tongs. Now these are neat because you can push this down. Well, you pull it out and it holds them closed. You push it down and they open up. So in the drawer, they're not such a mess. I have these in several sizes, but I'm just showing you one. You need this to pick stuff up with. Now, this is something that I got from uh, Pampered Chef years ago, but I know I've seen them at Bed Bath & Beyond, but what it is, you see how it's got these little, it's stained too, these little teeth-like, saw-like looking things on it. When you're going to open a jar, and I don't have a ring on this, but you slide that to where it's snug on that lid, and then you turn it. And what happens, those little teeth grip your lid, and you can open jars that plumb on down to ketchup bottle size, which they're plastic now, but it's wonderful. This is great for opening jars. So if you don't have one of those, if you don't think you need it right now because you still got lots of muscles, the day's coming when you're going to need one, so start looking for it. Old age happens to everybody. This is a little, looks like a pizza cutter, but actually, and it has uh, two or three little blades that you can swap out, but this is what I use when I make dumplings because it's a plastic, and that's what I cut my strips with, or pie crust if I'm going to make lattice, and it's just handy. That's Pampered Chef. And then, one more thing I want to show y'all, and I've talked to you about before, I love olive wood. Olive wood in uh, Israel, over in that area, the olive tree has always been a sign of peace. And it's something about when I use olive wood, I don't know, call me crazy, I don't care. It makes me feel closer to the good Lord, because he, the olive the olive branch and the olive wood and the olive tree, a lot of that's in the Bible. Anyhow, I like olive wood. And so, everywhere I go, I'm looking for olive wood. And I've got several pieces here. Here's a big scoop thing. This I use a lot, and I love the shape of it because you can do it around in the bottom of the pan, and this little point thing gets down in the crack and stirs everything for you. Now, on your wood utensils, and I have a bunch that are not olive wood. You want to um, get you some mineral oil, or you want to use the stuff that Booze, the Booze Company, B-O-O-S, makes for their Booze Butcher, butcher Blocks, um, and you want to uh, keep them oiled, because they'll get dry and eventually they'll crack. And these are quite pricey. You want to take care of them. Now I'm going to show you all something that's just fun to me. When I was growing up, we always had a gas stove. And we didn't have very many bonfires outside to do stuff with. And we ate uh, hot dogs. And this is the fork that my mama had that we were allowed to put our weenie on to roast it on the stove. Now that fork, no telling how many weenies it's roasted for us to eat. I like to just put mustard on a piece of bread, roast me a weenie, and wrap it up in it and eat it. That's, that was one of my favorites growing up. But we'd put them in hot dog too. But anyhow... That's something that's been around. I'm 49, and as long as I, I'm 49, I'm 67, been married 49 years. As long as I can remember, this was at my mom's house when I was a kid. So, some things are here to stay. I do have quite a few knives. I have a knife set that I thoroughly enjoy that I got when I had a Pampered Chef party. A lot of my stuff, I'd have a party. And yeah, I had to fix refreshments for everybody, but guess what? You get so much free stuff. And that's where I got a lot of my stuff that I showed you today. Got it absolutely free 
from having a party. It was my point system. Now I'm going to get the camera and show you my little, I'm sure you've seen this area over here that has all of my stuff in it. And all of this has got to fit back in. But I wanted to show you, um, I've got some containers over there that I don't have enough drawers to keep all this in. So I've just, I've got whisk and um, spatulas in one, my wooden utensils and my serving spoons in the other one, and all of the other in the back, and then some of this goes back into the little drawers. But I am going to show you all that. If y'all like something like this, please comment and let me know because some of you have wanted me to show you my favorite, like my Instapot, my mixers, uh, my Vitamix, different, different things that I use all the time and you've asked me to do a video on it. But I don't want to bore you and I don't want to put one up and nobody watch it because listen folks, I need watch time. So let me know what you would like to see. I do have quite a collection of uh, small appliances that I enjoy using. I don't use all of them all the time, but they're there for their purpose when I need it, and I love that. For many years, if, if Troy got me something, it was something for the kitchen because he would hear me say something I wanted. So, yeah, I've got a lot of gadgets, and I love every one of them because I love to cook. This is my happy place. I love my kitchen. So, let me turn the camera over here, and I'm going to show y'all the drawers where I have some more stuff. And uh, where I keep these regularly and um, then I'll get off of here and see y'all again tomorrow with something else but let me know if you want videos like this where I'll know what I need to be okay, doing. Okay see I've got a small one here with my spatulas and all of my um, that kind of stuff in it. This is where I keep my, all my wooden and my spoons and then the back one back there is a gallon crock that somebody was gonna throw away and I grabbed it and washed it all up but it's where I keep everything else. All of these kind of uh, spatulas and everything that I can fit in there that's not over there. Now I have a drawer here that I have cords uh, for my appliances. I have some more tongs in here. I have my forks that I get the roasting stuff out with. A little spatula. That's the kind of stuff that goes in this drawer. And then I have a drawer down here to where I got a lot of that stuff out that I showed you. And this is some stuff I didn't show you that I don't use a whole lot, but hey, it's mine. I've got it when I need it. And then I have some tart pans and things like that down here in the bottom. I've got this thing that's pretty cool. You clip this on the side of your pot and your spoon rests in it, hanging over the pot if you're cooking. That thing is nice. It's pretty good. It's made by Norpro, so you can get it just about anywhere. But anyhow, okay, y'all. That's it for today. I hope y'all have enjoyed visiting the kitchen and seeing some of my fun stuff. You know, when I say my prayers every day, I always say, Jesus, thank you for all of my toys and gadgets in the kitchen that you've allowed me to have that I enjoy using. And thank you for my sewing room, Lord, and my machines and everything you've allowed me to have that I enjoy. I'm very grateful. I don't take stuff for granted. I, I could cook without this, but it sure makes it easier to have the right little tool for the right um, project. I watch Goodwill. I watch garage sales, thrift shops. You know what? You can get stuff that you're looking for a whole lot cheaper uh, if you'll just be on, you know, be alerted and always watching for it when you're out and about. I like to get good used stuff. If I can get something cheap used, I can get several for what I'd pay for one new one. And I don't have a problem with that. I know how to disinfect it and make it ready for my house or for me to wear. Do I shop Goodwill? Absolutely. I have beautiful jackets that I got at Goodwill that I'd have had to work two weeks to pay for at the store they came from. Do you have to tell everybody where you got it? No. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I just say thank you. But watch your thrift shops and you can get some stuff that you want. So I hope y'all have a blessed day today and hope you get some of your spoons out and stir in a pot put something good on the supper table and the good lord bless and keep you and come back tomorrow and we'll have something else fun to look at or watch me cook or something let me know what you'd like to see <laughs>